I've seen so many of these since I've been here. Another car accident. Apparently, a drunken driver jumped a red robot. She doesn't look good. No, but she'll be okay, I think. There are campaigns like Arrive Alive, which work so hard to reduce the number of road accidents. In today's lesson, we're going to see if these campaigns have been successful. We're going to use road accident statistics in South Africa and represent them on a graph. The graphs can give us information about when most road accidents are happening and whether the road accidents is increasing or decreasing. We also need to consider how the number of cars is increasing in the streets and if this is an effect on the road accidents. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to use a cumulative frequency table to draw a cumulative frequency graph and use a cumulative frequency graph to interpret the data. Let's see if we can find out more about the number of patients treated here as a result of road accidents. Perhaps we could speak to Matron Spencer. She seems to know everything that happens around here. Hello, Matron. We're back again for more statistics, if it's okay with you. We've just come from the emergency ward where a patient has just been rushed in after a road accident. Another one. You know, if more people were to see some of the injuries caused by road accidents, I'm sure that they'll be more careful on the roads. They will remember to fasten their seat belts. Do you have records on the number of patients admitted with road accident injuries? Yes, I do. Um, the numbers vary according to the time of day, so we keep a record for the number of people for each three-hour period. Are these the statistics that you're looking for? The perfect. These are the numbers for the whole of 2005. We've recorded the total number of road accidents that were brought to the hospital. We've also made a note of the time of day that each patient was admitted. Great, thanks. Now, what can we do with this data? First of all, it has already been grouped into class intervals that cover three hour stretches of the day. So, the data is already organized into a grouped frequency table. If we want to see which times of the day are busiest, we could represent this data either on a histogram or on a frequency polygon. I think we should use a frequency polygon. Remember that a frequency polygon represents continuous data. This data has continuous time over 24 hours. So we'll put that on the x-axis. This makes sense because time is independent. The time of the day does not depend on how many road accidents there are. The data is already divided into class intervals of three hours. So we can mark those off on the x-axis. On the y-axis, we will use a mark for every 10 injuries due to road accidents. So we can mark them off 0 to 10 20 and up to something a bit more than this highest frequency of 87. So let's make it go up to 100. Then we mark off 34 for the first class. Remember that this must be plotted at the midpoint of the class interval. Then we need to plot 76 for the next class and carry on until we get to 44 for the last class interval from 24 hours. That's midnight, up to 3 in the morning. Now we can join the plotted points like this. Remember that a frequency polygon, we always extend the line to the midpoint of one class before the first class and take it back to the x-axis. On the other side, we also take it back to the x-axis at the midpoint of the next class interval. Then we can finish off our frequency polygon with labels of the axes. The x-axis represents the time of the day and the y-axis represents the number of people injured in road accidents. Let's call our graph something like a number of road accident victims admitted to hospital in 2005. And this is a completed frequency polygon. What does this tell us about the number of road accident victims who come to this hospital? We can see that the graph peaks between 6 and 9 in the morning. That makes sense because there are more cars on the road at this time of the day. People are heading off to work or to school, and I guess some are late, so they rush and take chances. Then, up until 3 in the afternoon, the numbers of accidents decrease.
the next increase in the number of accidents occurs when people are going back home. And from 6 o'clock up until midnight, the number of accidents continues to increase. Why do you think that might be? My guess is that there is more reckless driving at night. Possibly there is more drunken driving. And of course it's dark and roads that are not well lit up are more dangerous to travel on. Of course, these are just my informed guesses based on the graphs and the little I know about driving habits. We would need to go back to the records to find out the actual reason for the increased numbers of accidents. Looking at the graph again, does it immediately tell us about the total number of accidents over the year? No, it doesn't. We would have to count the total of all the frequencies for the different times of day. In the last lesson, we saw that a cumulative frequency graph, also known as an ogive, can show us the accumulated data as it increases over time. Now, I want to show you how to draw a cumulative frequency graph. For the frequency polygon, we use this frequency table to plot each point. We're going to add a column to this table and I'm going to label it cumulative frequency. In this column, we can put it in the running total of the number of injuries due to road accidents. The values in the column for cumulative frequency tells us how many people were admitted in total before a particular time of day. To find the cumulative frequency, I need to add up all the frequencies in the previous row of the table. The first cumulative frequency will be the same as the frequency because there is nothing to add up yet, so it will be 34. The next cumulative frequency will be 34 plus the value of the second class interval. That's 76. So, to get the cumulative frequency, we just add 76 to 34 and get 110. To find the third cumulative frequency, we can add 38 to our running total. That will give us 148 so far. Can you work out the rest of the cumulative frequencies? You should get 171, then 237, then 322, then 409, and lastly 453. So the total frequency or cumulative frequency of road accident victims admitted to this hospital over the years was 453. So by 9 o'clock in the morning, 110 people had already been admitted to hospital due to road accidents. Remember, this value does not represent the accident on only one day. It represents the total number of people sent to this hospital as a result of a car accident before 9 in the morning over the whole year. Now that we have these totals, we can plot our own cumulative frequency graph. As with the frequency polygon, we can use the same class intervals of 3 hours on the horizontal axis, the x-axis. So, the x-axis represents the time of day. The vertical axis or y-axis will represent the cumulative frequency. So, we need to choose a suitable scale for the y-axis. What scale would you use to make sure that your graph is clear and as big as possible on your paper? The maximum number we need to plot is 453. The smallest value or the minimum value of the graph will be 34. So, let's take the y-axis up to 500 and mark intervals of 50 off for every 50 people. We can mark off 0, 50, 100, 150, and finally 500. Now, we can plot the end point of each class interval against the cumulative frequency. So, the first point we can plot will be at 6 o'clock on the x-axis and 34 on the y-axis. The next point must be plotted at 9 o'clock and 110. The next will be at 12 o'clock at 148. When this is finished, we end up with 453 at 3 o'clock. When you have filled in all the points from your table, the points can be joined. We can label the x-axis with time of day and we can call the y-axis cumulative frequency. We will call the graph cumulative frequency of road accident victims admitted to hospital in 2005. Now, what do you notice about the shape of the graph? Do you see that it has a steep slope initially but then has a flatter slope over here? Then it increases rapidly between these two points again, but flattens slightly after midnight. 
this is quite often to be expected with cumulative frequency graphs. A steep increase, followed by a flatter increase, and then a steep increase again. The slope of the graph tells us about how much increase there is between points of the graph. Here's another use for the cumulative frequency graph. We can read off the median and the upper and lower quartiles from it. Because the data is grouped into three hour intervals, we don't have the exact number of road accidents for every hour. So what we can do is to find the positions of the median and the upper and lower quartiles. Let me show you what I mean. Let's find the median position first. The number of values in our data set is 453 because that is the cumulative total. The median divides the data into two equal parts if the data is arranged in order. So to find the median, we need to find the value that is in the middle. The median position is the 227th value. There are 226 values on either side of the median. So to find the value of the median, we draw a line from the number 227 on the y-axis to the graph and join it to the x-axis. So the median value is in the class intervals of 1500 hours to 1800 hours. We can see that it is about 1700 hours or 5 p.m. The cumulative frequency up to this time of the day is 227. This tells us that by about 5 p.m., about half of the road accidents have taken place. And the other half of the road accidents happen after 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Let's see if the interquartile range is useful here. We find the position of the lower quartile and the upper quartile in the same way as we found the medium position. They are in the position that divide the data below the medium and above the median into halves. There are 226 values below the medium and 226 values above the median. So the lower quartile's position at 113,5 and the upper quartile's position is halfway between 453 and 227, which is 340,5. We can find the value of the lower quartile here at about 9 a.m. and the value of the upper quartile is here at about 9 p.m. So the interquartile range is from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. One half of the road accidents happened during this time. This doesn't seem to show us anything important, but remember that these statistics were only for this hospital and only over one year. The Department of Transport would need to look at these statistics over a long period of time and for the whole of South Africa in order to understand the problems and identify ways to decrease the number of road accidents. As with so many real situations, we need to consider that there are other factors involved here. Can you think of something that could affect the number of accidents on the road? One factor is the total number of vehicles on the road. The number of vehicles on the road has increased from about 5.8 million vehicles in 1998 to about 6.2 million vehicles in 2002. And that's only the registered vehicles, since we can't keep records of the unregistered vehicles. Here's a cumulative frequency graph that shows the total number of cars on the road between 1998 and 2002. The graph shows a steady increase of the number of vehicles over five years. It looks like about 100,000 extra vehicles come onto the roads each year. Obviously, this would increase the number of road accidents and number of injuries that we have each year. Unless we all become safer drivers at the same time. The total population of South Africa has also increased over this time by about 2,8 million people. This could also be a reason in the increased number of accidents on the road. So, before any good researcher can draw any conclusion about deaths on the road, they would need to consider all these factors. We would also need to consider reasons for these accidents. In my research, I found an article which gave me some interesting road statistics in 2005. It explains that 70-80% to 80 of the road accidents in 2004 were caused by human factors such as not obeying traffic rules and aggressive, reckless, negligent or inconsiderate driver behavior, including driving too fast or driving under the influence of alcohol. A further 10-15% to 15 was caused by factors such as poor car lights, smooth or damaged tires, brakes not working. 
Lastly, only 5 to 10 percent of the incidents have been caused by poor road conditions. Statistics like these can inform people involved in traffic safety and help them to educate drivers and raise awareness about safety on the road. We've covered all areas of statistics today, and I hope we've also made you more aware of how important it is to drive safely on the roads. Now let's have a look at what we've learned from this lesson. First, we saw that a frequency polygon is a useful representation of statistics if you want to compare parts of the data to each other. However, it doesn't give us a clear picture of the total of the data. Then, we looked at the cumulative frequency so that we can find the total of all the frequencies in a set of data. We calculated the cumulative frequencies and added them to the frequency table. Cumulative frequency can be graphed by plotting an upper limit of each class interval and the cumulative frequency. We joined these points to form a cumulative frequency graph, which is also called an ogive. We can read the median and the interquartile range from the graph. The slope of the graph tells us how much the frequency of the data has increased from one plotted point to the next. The steeper the slope, the greater the increase. Now, it's time for your task. Lead is a major environmental health hazard for young children. An urban hospital is investigating the levels of lead in the urine of children in the area. Lead in the urine indicates that children have been exposed to lead in polluted air, such as in places where cars use leaded petrol. The table shows lead levels in urine of 140 children. Complete the cumulative frequency column, plot a cumulative frequency graph of the data, give the five number summary for this data by reading it off the graph, and finally, draw the conclusion from the graph. We'll be back with more statistics, so do join us again.